Hi folks, back with the uh, Rita T20 again. Uh, today is Sunday. Uh, yesterday, about 20 to 4 in the morning, my daughter did have a baby. Nice little baby girl, about eight and a half pound. She's doing well. And also that came yesterday, there's two tins of the ages, so I can get on with the tune. Uh, as you know, I've fitted a manometer to this. They're not brilliantly accurate. It's only a cheap one. But the good thing about it is that you can actually bleed off the cylinder with it. And it's got air in it now, so that's what I'll do before I start the tune. I'll just get the scope off. And then... Uh, I'll bleed the air out of it and what I'm going to do is uh, set the regulator at 90 bar and see how it goes at 90 bar. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so on this particular, oh, I don't know if I'm about to do it on that. Probably have to get a full size. Yeah, I'll just get a a bigger wrench. I'll take the uh, manometer, undo it slightly, and that will bleed the air off it. Jeez, what tight this one. It's the easiest way to do it. You can do it from the manometer at the front, but it's easier on the bottom of this one. Empty that. I'll just take it right off now. Now on these, there's no O-ring on it, but there is a Del ring flat washer at the base of the uh, block that seals it. Okay, so underneath it's a four millimeter group screw, Allen group screw that holds in the, the block. Don't have to get it all the way out, but just take the Take the barrel off, that makes it easier. Four millimeter grub screws as well. Usually, you'll find these only come with uh, the rear screw. God knows why they don't put two in. It's not very good, is it? 
sort of valve easy enough to come off. And then you just grab an old of the block and wiggle it out. It's the hardest bit actually. So that's that. So what you're left with is a cylinder in the block. Just unscrew the block. Long thread. Now on the block you've got two slots for two big O-rings. You remove them so that the uh, the regulator can breathe. The actual uh, valve itself that unscrews out of the block. It is under tension. So you need to uh, just protect it by loosening it. Put that in the vise, it's got a soft jaw vise, be easier than that. Okay, so the regulator is in the cylinder and it's got a little uh, screw hole in it. When you can put a screw in it, screw it in and then pull it out. So I will get the screw to fit that. the right size so you just screw the uh, screw in so you can grip that screw now some pliers and wiggle it out so we've got the regulator now uh, on the top of the regulator that's the adjuster you screw it down to lower the pressure and you screw it up out again so we uh, increase the pressure on the side of the valve Robert Blaine uh, Robert Lane does a red marking and that's where the valve is set at and I think I believe he set this at 80 bar so the two red lines should be together at 80. Uh, I've actually undone it one notch which is 85 bar, I'm going to just undo it now. Another notch to make it 90 bar. And if you've got a, a small drill bit or a really thin screwdriver to put in the hole, you can turn it. I should have had this with me somewhere. I've got a little pick here and I'll do it with that so I'm going to just do it to the next slot along Okay, so in theory now that is 90 bar. So <clears throat> once you've done that, you can take this screw out of the back. Put some uh, silicon grease on the O-rings. Uh, it's got an o-ring on the inside there and that's to fit 
into the inside of the uh, valve block where this air for this space for the air goes in. Uh, if you look on the rim of the uh, regulator, you'll see a hole, and the hole in that is for the regulator to breathe. That needs to be on pointing up because uh, it has got oil in it. So that's the top of the regulator. So that's in there. With that pointing to the top, I'll just put a bit of grease on the inside of the cylinder, not on the threads, but where the uh, actual regulator makes contact with the cylinder, just to make it a bit easier to slide in. Uh, so what I've got to do now. Try shoving it in as far as I can, as straight as I can. To make sure that we don't pinch the, uh, the actual O-ring. Right, what I'll do, try getting the regulator in. Stop all the boredom. Uh, it's just the O-ring. It was too big, so I've sort of a slightly smaller O-ring. It's okay. Uh, put it in. Went in dead easy. Once it got the right O-ring on it, uh, put the front end back on. Put the man on me to back on and filled it with air. Uh, we're at 200 bar now. Not leaking. Regulator set at 90 bar, so uh, I suppose I better do a shot string and see uh, what it's doing now. Uh, if it goes over too much, I can pack the, uh, the valve out on the valve spring, or I can just use the hammer to reduce it because that is winding quite a way. So I might start off using the hammer if I need to. But, uh, all I need to do is basically now is pull it back together and then do the uh, shooting test using the Hades which I found the most uh, efficient through the barrel ok so I just loop that a bit because it can get a bit uh, tight when you pull it out I don't want to damage the O-rings Okay, so that's on there. Just using the grub screw. Down. Yeah. It's just that that's holding the uh, actual rifle in place. back on. Action, put the safety on. Now, 
put the magazine in first, that be a single or multi shot. Then you can push your barrel in until it touches or just off it. Otherwise, you tighten it up and then it's too tight to get the magazine in. What I might do is uh, put the multi shot magazine on and uh, start the test. It's a bit quicker than using single shot. Uh, I've got the uh, chronograph with me, so uh, I'll start the test. Fill it to 200 bar and we'll see what, what it's doing. Uh, like I say, if it's too much, I'll just adjust the ammo spring to start off with. So uh, that's the next part of the test. Okay then. Let's take the first shot, see what we're doing. Safety off. Ten point nine eleven point zero eleven point zero eleven point three eleven point three eleven Point three ten point nine eleven point zero eleven point five eleven point zero eleven point six Tight for the uh, magazine, the multi shot on. Oh, shoot. Look. Slightly more. That's okay. Ten point seven. Ten point zero. Ten point five. Ten point zero. Ten point five. It might be uh, too far forward and trapping the. Yeah, I reckon. Slightly obstructing the uh, transfer port. Eleven. Yeah. Point three. That's what was happening there. So that string of tens that I've just done. Just get rid of those. Okay. 
start again. Let's see what I've got one in it. No. Eleven point zero. Eleven point three. Ten point eight. Eleven point zero. Eleven point four. Ten point five. Ten point seven. Ten point seven. Eleven point zero. Ten point five. Ten point six. Eleven point two. Eleven point two ten point seven eleven point two eleven point four empty. Right, I'll do this one as the last uh, string that you see then. I'll show you what the final result is. You don't want to see pallets being fired all day you'll be you'll be bored but uh, just watch this uh, string of 11 and uh, I'll come back to you 10 point five ten point nine six double point zero Ten point eight. Ten point nine. Eleven point two. Eleven point one. Eleven point one. Eleven point one. Eleven point one. I think that's it. Yeah, okay, Let's see where we are now. That's about 150 bar, and uh, I've deleted some on here, so it's showing 39 shots, but I've probably fired more like 46 shots. I'll get rid of this six foot pound because that was a double feed. Okay, so I'll call that 38 shots then. As you can see, it's uh, most of them are between 11 and 11.3. The temperature is around 5 centigrade, so that that will also make a difference. So everything's cold, but uh, that's that's pretty good actually. That's where you need a rifle to be to stay. Uh, safe really so I will see you when I've completed the shot string at 90 bar <laughs> okay then folks so that's the end of the exercise today uh, pretty good results really uh, just going back to it, it's uh, I actually fired probably about 140 shots. The shots recorded 100 shots, uh, gave an average of 10.9 foot pounds, a high of 11.6, and a low of 10.5. Uh, that's from 100 shots. So, uh, I mean, bearing in mind it's a pistol length barrel at 11 inches, it's going to make a big difference when uh, 
I get a full size barrel on this. Uh, so, food per second wise, uh, that was an average of uh, 687 feet per second, 5, 710, or down to around from 200 down to about 160 bar I was getting around 11 foot pounds all the way and then it dropped off a bit down then into the low tens uh, so the last was 675 feet per second which is 10 and a half foot pounds I think the, the high was uh, 710 which was 11.6 that was at the top end so in the end it gave me a spread of 35, a standard deviation of 8.5 out of the 100. So uh, like I say, bearing in mind it's only a short barrel, I'm pretty pleased with that. Uh, I did shoot it down to, I think it was 80 bar, and it started dropping off then. But uh, yeah, pretty pleased. Uh, I'll get it out on the range probably tomorrow or on the day after, see what it's like further out. But uh, so far, so good. And uh, I'll keep you updated on that. So, we're looking at the graph. If you can see that, there's the, the actual graph there of the spread. It, uh, it's pretty. Pretty good actually. Uh, yeah, nice and nice and flat, steadily dropping down. But uh, not too bad at all. So thanks for watching, and uh, I'll see you in the next video.